Labrador drinking coffee. Okay, the, the following video is the highlights of the Normandy Museums, the area that we um, <coughs> went through. You had enough coffee? The best museum, I think, was the Airborne Museum at Saint Marie Aglie. It's uh, extremely well appointed. The exhibits are first class. It covers off the glider-borne troops who really don't get as much of a mention as the paratroops, but who did in many ways a more difficult, more dangerous job. There's also uh, a museum called uh, the Museum at Dead Man's Corner, so named because it's, a, it's an old house that's been converted into pretty much the way it was in 1944. It has exhibits in it, it's a private collection and it's phenomenal. It's the best, best exhibition of US airborne um, equipment and mannequins as well as German airborne equipment because of the German Fallschirmjäger, their paratroopers were defending this piece of real estate when the Americans came through. A Stuart tank, a light reconnaissance tank, came up the road, the Germans probably knocked it out, incinerating the crew, and the crew commander was left dangling out of the turret. Um, and he was there for some number of days before they could recover him, hence the name Dead Man's Corner. Originally it was, it was referred to as the, the corner where the dead guy hangs out of the tank, but got abbreviated down to Dead Man's Corner. One of the best uh, museums I've ever seen, and as you'll see, the shop that's attached to it has got U.S. and German uh, airborne uniforms, equipment, militaria, uh, the best I've ever seen anywhere in the world. It's really first class. It's expensive, but this stuff is just the nature of the beast. Anything associated with airborne, British, um, German or, or American is extremely expensive. So that's that. Depending on how much time I've got on this video, I may include some other video footage of the, of the museums, but often they're in behind glass cabinets and you get the problem of light refracting off the cabinets and this is not very good footage. So that's that. It's Karen Tan down there. So this is the what passes for higher ground in this very very flat territory and the reason that they wanted to take this town or this little area is it's a crossroads and it dominates the approaches to Karen Tan and the marshy areas. It was named because the Germans knocked out an American reconnaissance tank, leaving the dead commander hanging out of the turret for many days. The Americans called it the corner where the dead tanker hangs out of the tank, and then they abbreviated it down to Dead Man's Corner. <laughs> Wie Sie sehen, Herr Wagner, die Lage ist sehr ausgesucht. Formulierung wäre ein Hund mit Ihrer Reihe. Unsere Divisionsgemeinschaft wird also ein Hund haben. Ja, keine Dinge haben Sie auch. Wir haben sehr oft das ist die Rechtsbeweis. Wir haben sehr oft die Lage von oben und von unten. Wir haben keine Verbände mehr. Ja, wir müssen das in den Brücken. Wenn Sie gerne Brücken nach vorne hören, die Brücken sind von äußerster Wichtigkeit. Ja, Sie laufen, die kommen nicht weiter. Ich
Old Scout Museum, but it's very, very good. Got one of these games. <laughs> Got one of those. Got one of those. It's a pity we have the reflective glass. I mean, I wonder where the guy got all this stuff. What you're looking at here is Dick Winter's actual combat jacket. And there he is. Just for a uh, K98. Gravity knife. The Wolfman. Jesus. The light's not very good. There's a bloody great reflective patch, but it's a uh, P38. Captured by an American. He engraved the word Karen Tan on the pistol, which is where he captured it. And there's an airborne, you can't quite see it in this bloody light, but there's an airborne badge on the holster. And this guy was killed later on in Holland, deactivating a mine. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's a K98 scabbard that's been cut by a shell fragment. It was taken off the body of a dead German by one of the Americans. We've got a uh, MP40 there that's got a bullet through the receiver. We have German helmet with a shrapnel gash, German helmet with a bullet hole. Those fantastic relics. And one of these very rare. <laughs> oh man. I'm going to get my hands on that.
roof cavity. <laughs> this is exceptionally well done, it really is. Parachute canopy and bag that's come through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> it's very clever. Well, we've just been into probably the best museum, Dead Man's Corner. Deals mainly with airborne German and American airborne. And they have a shop in there for a Jewish collector which will make you shit your pants. In a very short period of time, I've spent a thousand euros or thereabouts, 900 euros. And I don't know what is looking minutes. at me. In 10 minutes, and I could be in back in there spending a lot more, but I'm gonna, gonna contain myself. My long suffering wife. In the crepe alley. I'm not ready for my crepe alley. And I'm Mr. Meat and Mr. Dunnell. What's the name of the town? I love that. I love that church town. It's beautiful. Saint Louis de Mont. De Mont. Oh. Saint Louis. Okay. 